I don't know if you saw this, but the Packers lead the league. This is great. Lead the league in percentage of dropbacks where the quarterback is sacked under duress or a hit. Now, it should be pointed out that the Cowboys were depleted at their offensive line, especially left tackle. When they haven't had Tyron Smith, they haven't been the same team. But the Packers, through five games, lead the league in quarterback pressures without a blitz. Remember, over the offseason, they signed Zadarius Smith. He's uh, He came from Baltimore. Like Mike Pettin, part of that Baltimore kind of posse, right? Brings over Zadarius Smith. They signed Preston Smith from Washington. So they got the brothers Smith, who, of course, collapsed that pocket multiple times. Uh, Adrian Amos, they signed from Chicago. He had a pick versus the Bears in week one. He leads the team in tackles. And they drafted Darnell Savage, who's got one interception, one forced fumble, and is second on the team in tackles. They've remade this team. One that pressures the passer. One that pressures the passer. And one that pressures the passer without blitzing. They're younger, they're more athletic. They also have committed to running the football. Part of that Kyle Shanahan scheme, and you saw it yesterday in um, in Dallas, you'll see it tonight in San Francisco, is that zone blocking run scheme that we saw for Denver for all those years. It's the new look on Mike Shanahan's vaunted offense. And it's the reason that they don't value running backs that much is because kind of anybody if you learn how to push it and then hit the hole and have one cut, lots of people can do it. It's built more around the offensive line, the agility of the offensive line, and you need a quarterback who can also move. And while you ever, we always think that quarterbacks that move are quarterbacks that are back there and they're scrambling around. Like Lamar Jackson can really move. Steve Young can really move. Like I, I got a phone call yesterday from Ryan Music, or I don't know if I called. Did I call you? You called me. I think I called you. You did call me, yes. Okay. So I called Ryan Music yesterday and we started, somehow we got into a discussion about Dan Marino. He's like, hey, I'm not really old enough to know, like, why didn't Dan Marino win more? Was it his defense? Like, yeah. Was his running game? I was like, yeah. Um, the, the, the division was much more difficult. Remember, this was during an era in which the Bills went to back, to back, to back, to back Super Bowls. Right? You had a Hall of Fame quarterback in Buffalo. The Jets, during various times in his career, were pretty good. They didn't have a defense. They didn't have a running game. But some of the running game was caused by the fact that Dan Marino had to be in the shotgun because though he had great feet around the pocket and a quick release, he just couldn't get back to hand the football off or wasn't comfortable in play action the way that Joe Montana was, for example. So one of the reasons that Daniel Jones was somebody that a lot of NFL people who run those West Coast top offenses like is you need a quarterback that can move. Dwayne Haskins can't move. Bad feet. We we ratio we we stereotype dudes due to race. And it's pretty funny. Dwayne Haskins is a black quarterback, is not really a very good athlete. Daniel Jones is a white quarterback and is an exceptional athlete. Kind of just shows the stereotypes don't really fit. Um, but when I look at Aaron Jones running the football, when I see these numbers of the Packers and their ability to get after the passer, I start to realize that yesterday, don't get me wrong, Aaron Rodgers still had a couple of Aaron Rodgers throws, but he's managing the game. He's not making it all about Aaron. Sure, financially, with the contract he got, it's all about Aaron. And in the TV commercials, it's all about Aaron. But in their four wins this year, 221 yards per game, four touchdowns, no interceptions, 62% completion percentage, 6.9 yards per attempt, which would be tied for 23rd in the NFL. That one loss they had to the Eagles, where he had to carry the team, he did, 422 yards, two touchdowns, did have a pick, That was a deflected ball, their last offensive play. 64% completion percentage and 7.9 yards per attempt. He still has his fastball. He just doesn't have to throw it as much. And whether you want to call him a game manager or say that Aaron Rodgers is not throwing anymore, he's pitching, whatever you want to do. My son's 10 years old, left-handed, got a good arm, and he got to pitch yesterday. And one of the things that his coach in travel baseball 
and I'm totally committed to is we're going to make him into a pitcher, not a thrower. Throwers, and there's plenty of them, they just come in and they just try and throw gas. And they learn to locate and throw gas. And he's got a good arm. He's got pretty, yesterday the glove was popping. Like, man, he, he sounded good. And he was locating. But you want to get him to the point where he can throw a breaking ball early into account. As a lefty, can he throw a breaking ball without fearing that it's going to run in and hit a right-handed batter? Which is what he's doing. He's learning to become a pitcher, not just a thrower. And Aaron Rodgers is learning to become a pitcher, not just a thrower. He's probably always had this in him, but now he doesn't really need to throw. Every once in a while, you're going to come to an at-bat where you just got to throw some gas by a dude. Just rear back and throw gas. Every once in a while, we're going to need Aaron Rodgers is going to be needed to just bail him out. That's what happened against the against the Philadelphia Eagles. Here's Trent Dilfer, former NFL quarterback, Super Bowl champion, earlier in the show. He finally has an offense that isn't doesn't put everything on him. And I don't care how good you are, whether you're Tom Brady, John Elway, Dan Marino, Aaron Rodgers, you name it. When too much is put on the quarterback, it's a bad thing. You got to have balance. You got to have multiple answers. Uh, Aaron's lived in this offensive world for the last five or six years where he comes to the line of scrimmage, he double counts, he triple counts. He's basically the head coach on the football field and at some point it becomes too much. This year he's got more tools to work with. He's got more formations, more personnel groupings, more answers on offense, a better run game, a better play action game. Uh, it's going to be able to control the ball, set up big plays in the passing game. It fits who they are. It complements their defense, complements their special teams. I think that's what Matt's done there more than anything else is he's taken some of the burden off Aaron. Taking some of the burden off him. Again, here's the youth pitching analogy. Just throw strikes, put it in play, let the defense make plays, right? That's really what it comes down to. It's the it's the it's the guy who can go by his man in basketball every time. Doesn't mean you need to. Let other people play with the ball. Shot clock's running down, we need a bucket. We'll still come to you. So I think it's fascinating that Aaron Rodgers kind of managed the game yesterday. Made a couple of great throws, hand the ball off, found Aaron Jones in the, in the flat, got him into where they're supposed to get into, didn't turn the football over, and, and really let the Cowboys spit up all over themselves. Why? Because he's got an elite defense that when you get a big lead, the way they got a 21 to nothing lead, they can pin their ears back and just pressure the passer. I mean, I, I watched the Lakers play their first preseason game Against the Golden State Warriors, they opened up the new Chase Center in San Francisco, and they—I mean—and I, granted, Anthony Davis is being guarded by no one. I—I I get that we want to buy into the Golden State Warriors, and we'll preview the NBA, but I'm not sure people understand without Clay, who's their best defender as well as their third best scorer from last year. Without Clay, like there's no defensive shut. Without Andre Iguodala, who's not on the team, like they lose a lot on defense, a lot. And and the fear for the Warriors is, are they just going to ride Steph to where it wears him out, not just this year in the playoffs, but in the next year? Just like for the Lakers, there's Anthony Davis was spectacular. But I think a good portion of why LeBron is going to allow him to be the focal point of the offense in the regular season is he knows he can't do it every game or even half the games anymore. Doesn't have to. Just facilitate, make shots, score 20, 25 a game, win a bunch of games. And then the playoffs, we may need you to win us a series. Same with Aaron Rodgers. When you have a pre-established relationship as being one of the best in the sport, in the history of the sport, I, I, I think you actually can, I think you actually can dial it back a little bit and save it for the playoffs. Hi, I'm Doug Gottlieb from uh, Fox Sports Radio, and you need to subscribe to the Fox Sports Radio YouTube channel where you can hear and see me. Why not? Plus, everybody else who's awesome here in Fox Sports Radio.